Hey everyone, Todd from Sideshow FX once again, and in this video, I'm going to show you all the different parts of our Ableton Live MIDI controller for Stream Deck devices package. Now I assume that you've gone through the PDF that was included in the download and followed the instructions on the installation there, or you've watched our installation video. And uh, if you have not, I have the link uh, in the description below. But once you're set up, this is the main page that you're presented with. Now I'm going to be uh, demonstrating this on an Excel device. Most of the functions are available on the 15 key, so you can follow along with, with no problem here. Additionally, I'll be demonstrating this on a Mac system, but all the features and functions are identical on the Windows profile. So on the main page, this is what you're presented with. It's uh, largely a selected track feature on the main page. So I'll, I'll start here with the uh, one of the middle rows. These are the selected track buttons here. So as the name suggests, we pop up to Ableton here. You can see we can click on any one of these tracks here and uh, they get selected. So right now we have tracks one to eight being uh, available to us to be selected. And as you can see, my project has 13 tracks in it, uh, and we only have eight keys on the Stream Deck XL. So to access the tracks beyond track eight, to get to tracks nine to 13, that's where our, our bank uh, buttons come in. So hitting bank to the right, we'll then slide everything down, and now we have tracks nine 10, 11, 12, and 13 available to us. Bank, of course, takes us back to tracks one to eight. Now the track function, when we press track, it will select the next track from the one that's currently selected and vice versa for track backwards. So it's good that we can select a track, but what can we do when we have the track selected? Well, that's where this fader comes in because this is our selected track fader control. So whichever Fader is, is selected in Ableton. We can control its volume from here. You can see the volume moving up and down there. Now, if you find that the control of this is either too slow or too fast for your needs, you can very easily modify this. We'll pop over to Stream Deck here and if we click on either the top or the bottom key, it doesn't really matter. We'll start with the bottom one. And you can see you get this dialog box here and with this slider control for the fader speed. So we can slow it down, just slide this down. And we would do the same thing with the top button because this controls going down and this controls going up. So you, you really should have them about the same. So let's slide this down to roughly the same spot go back into Ableton and try the fader now. You can see it's moving a lot slower. So I'll put that back to about where we had it. And now we're back to a bit quicker response. So you can adjust those to how it suits your workflow. Now the other uh, fader button here is our master fader. So of course, adjusting that, our master will move up and down. Along the bottom here are some transport keys and loop. These set of keys here, of course, this is going to insert an audio track for us to the right of the currently selected track. Just undo that. And this will insert a MIDI track to the right of the currently selected track. Undo. And this hotkeys will open up a few extra hotkeys for us that we can access. Now up along the top here, we have our time bar display uh, that will show us uh, our beats. Next over, we have a clip effects button that will pop up the dialog. If we have a, a clip selected, it will show up our clip effects here. Now, this is a console key, so opening this up will give us uh, the console view plus a few more pages. Just clicking on that, we now are presented with our uh, console mixer view. And instead of having to select a track, these are dedicated to each of the tracks one through eight. 
So clicking on any one of these, our fader controls respond accordingly. And once again, to get to tracks beyond track 8, in this case tracks 9 to 13, we hit the bank button and now we can control tracks 9 to 13. And this row is an LCD display of the name of the track and where the pan is currently for each track. A couple transport controls up here. This page is our mute solo arm page. So as you can see, same thing where we have tracks 1 to 8 listed here and we can solo any of the tracks, mute certain tracks, arm certain tracks, etc. Bank button, track buttons work the same here. We'll go back. Our pan page presents us with pan pots for each of the tracks we have here. Once again, right now, tracks 1 to 8. So we can make some adjustments to our panning. The top button of a pan pot moves it clockwise. The bottom button of a pan pot moves it counterclockwise. Just like that. And the LCD display gives us the readout of the name of the track and the position of the pan pot. Now you notice up here there's a flip button. What this allows us to do is when we press flip, it changes the control of these pots to now controlling volume instead of pan. So now when I move these pots, you can see that they are adjusting volume, not pan. Press flip again. Now we're controlling the pan pot. It's just, uh, you might find it a little easier instead of having to flip back and forth between the pages to quickly make an adjustment that way. Moving back, you will also notice on the previous page with our volume faders, we also have a flip button here. It will do the same thing in reverse. Hitting flip will now control, with these, these volume faders, will now control our pan. Now one additional troubleshooting note you might encounter is that occasionally you might find that the Stream Deck uh, stops being responsive. Uh, the MIDI controls aren't working anymore and you get error messages like this or even the graphics don't show up or you'll see a, uh, a MIDI symbol uh, showing that the graphics are offline. Now this is a known problem with how Stream Deck uses MIDI and it hasn't been fixed yet. But there is uh, a, a very simple workaround to avoid this happening, and that is you should always try and have your Stream Deck directly connected to your computer. So don't use a USB hub. Go straight from the Stream Deck into the computer, and that tends to make a much more stable MIDI connection. So if you have to go through a USB hub, you probably are going to find that this will occasionally go offline on you. So the fix to get everything back online is very simple. You just go back to uh, Stream Deck software, go back into the store, and uh, into plugins, search for the MIDI again, click uninstall, wait for it to do the uninstall process, and then immediately install it again. Now you may find you'll have to restart Stream Deck. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. So when you go back to your application, you'll find that things will work as they did before. And you have your functionality back. So that's a quick fix on that. But once again, the best approach is to make a direct connection from the Stream Deck to the computer and avoid using a USB hub for its connection. So that's it. That's all you need to know. I hope it really helps in your workflow and, and uh, it makes your life in the studio a lot easier. Thanks once again. We'll talk to you soon.